When's the last time you had a look inside your brain? For most of us, the answer is never, unless we are seeking answers to a health issue. But what if you could have a peek inside your brain? What would you be able to learn and see? We follow journalist Jerry Grillo, who did this and whose story has a twist he didn't expect. We can go for a walk, right we can go for a hike. Tucked into the side of a curving mountain road, some 90 miles north of Atlanta, Jerry and Jane Grillo have spent two decades carving out a life, raising their now grown daughter and 17-year-old son, Joe. Still hungry? Yes. Okay. That was good. Breakfast of champions. That's right. Joe has cerebral palsy. Jerry is a writer, and it was his job that brought us together five months before this mountain visit. The words that keep going through my head are, this should be interesting. Jerry had come to Emory Brain Health as part of a story he was writing on brain research. He was going to do something most people don't get to do, experience a look inside his brain by getting an MRI. I want to be able to go inside the torpedo tube and um, be able to write from that perspective. This is a really wonderful opportunity. Scary on the one hand, but, um, but a great chance on the other hand to help with a story that I want to tell. Jerry's fear comes from watching people he loves get MRIs. His son Joe, after seizures, and Jerry's dad, not long before he died from cancer at 58, the same age Jerry is now. My brothers and I always have this little thing. One brother's already past 58, another one's behind me. When my brother turned 58, I, said, I called him, I said, the clock's running. <laughs> I would like to know about if you're a healthy guy, like your age, if you're healthy, if you exercise, mm -hmm. and if you have a family history of any brain stuff. Sure, um, well, uh, knock on wood, I don't think we have a history of any brain stuff. Hey, how are you? Hey, Dr. Long. Jerry Grillo. Hey, Jerry. MRIs are usually for people seeking answers to a health issue. They're not usually for curious writers willing to be a guinea pig for the sake of a story. The chief operating system of my body, you know, what's happening in there when, um, when I'm breathing and doing all the things I take for granted. Hey, Jerry, how you doing? All right, so for the next 10 minutes, I need you to just open your eyes and focus on the plus sign, okay? This is actually measuring the connection between the two hemispheres of the brain. So this is what he's hearing. That's how loud it is in there. <laughs> Hi, Jerry, how are you doing? I'm gonna put on a video. You can watch it or you could close your eyes, okay? All right, here we go. Hey, Jerry, how are you doing? So these set of scans is going to be about 15 minutes to go. Okay. It's a little louder than the previous ones. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry spends almost an hour getting his MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging Scan, a test that uses powerful magnets to make detailed pictures of the brain. Emory neurologist Dr. James Law translates the images for Jerry. Wow. It looks brand new, like it's never been used. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Law tells Jerry he has a healthy looking brain, that both sides of his brain have symmetry. People talk about the gray matter of the brain, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's really that outside strip uh -huh. um, is your gray matter. And this is um, also probably the only time you ever want the adjective plump used to describe you, because otherwise it's never a flattering <laughs> adjective. <laughs> um, but you want your folds of brain tissue to be nice and full and plump. He tells Jerry that microscopic changes in the brain, such as those with Alzheimer's disease, cannot be seen on a scan, which is why people get lumbar punctures to withdraw spinal fluid. And the brain is basically bathing in that stuff, right? So it's floating in this fluid, which is actually made in some of these tissues. Scientists can measure the levels of amyloid protein and tau protein in spinal fluid. Both are hallmark proteins in the pathology of Alzheimer's. The meeting between Law and Grillo ends as it begins. 
your brain might be drop dead gorgeous, but then it may not be working so great. You have so. obviously have read some of my writings. <laughs> Nine days after this jovial exchange, Dr. Law's words will seem foreboding. I was sitting here on the couch, just a normal Sunday. I heard this sharp buzzing in my, it felt like the right side of my uh, ear, mm. like I've never experienced or heard before, you know, and I knew it was something because it immediately made me started going and, um, and that's how, that's what happened. And I kind of started lilting to port and um, asked Jane, please get me an aspirin. I think this might be a stroke because I had written about it years earlier. At home, on his couch, Jerry had a stroke. You were still vomiting. It was a cerebellar stroke. After three days in a North Georgia hospital, he was sent home. Five months later. Hey, hey how you doing? How Good to see you. you. Good, Good man. You. He and Dr. La meet again. In the grand scheme of things, the kind of stroke that you had, if, uh, if you had to choose one, that might be near the top of your list. Jerry cerebellar stroke is one of the less common types of stroke. It happens when a blood vessel is blocked or bleeding, causing complete interruption to a portion of the cerebellum. The cerebellum is the portion of the brain that controls movement and maintains balance. It's located at the back of your brain, at the bottom. We know it was a clot. We're not a hundred. I have a. We have installed a loop recorder in Just my to chest make sure to make sure. Don't have any rhythmia, yeah. Right. Yeah. To make sure that there's nothing happening there. You no, know, I always say that when it comes to uh, to damage to the brain, mm -hmm. the same three rules apply as the the first three rules of real estate. You remember those? Uh, uh, location, location, location. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> exactly. So how is it that Jerry's brain looked fine one day? Yet the next scan, taken nine days later, shows a brain now damaged by a stroke. Quite simply, our brains, like our very day-to-day -day lives, are unpredictable. And just because something is okay today, doesn't mean it will be tomorrow. Dr. La gives the silver lining. Jerry's recovery um, tells you that in fact the brain can be quite resilient. He's right. With the exception of some mild weakness in one hand, Jerry's feeling like his old self. I feel like mostly I'm I'm back. I can I can do tree pose, you know, uh, you know, I could I could do the balance exercises I need to do. Sometimes the fear, probably unfounded as it is, as most fear is, um, but comes from a real place, sometimes that gets to me and I'll worry a little bit about it and I'll go to a you know darker place where it's like good God this could happen to me and I thought I was on top of the world I thought I was in great shape and I thought that I was doing the right things you know and maybe I was and I've been told that I was and that if I hadn't it could have been worse looking back at the day we first met so many things Jerry said sound different now such as this knock on wood I don't think we have a history of any brain stuff for this lifelong writer, it was a plot twist he couldn't see coming. That twist changed Jerry's own story and his heart. I feel connected to my son more acutely. I feel my time with him is more precious than it ever was before, you know, uh, and, with, and with my wife as well. This? The reality of Joe cerebral palsy often relegates him to the sidelines, but not always. With a little ingenuity and some luck, he gets another chance. Just like his dad.